so today we're changing the blades on my or not the blades i'm sorry the belts the drive belts on my timber king 1220 drive belts wheel belts blade belts whatever you want to call them um not the actual drive belt from the engine down to the wheels so i guess it's the wheel belts and i'm not sure if you guys can see that sun's probably putting a nasty glare on it let me try to get this set up for you so i've already gotten that side done and it really wasn't as horrible as i thought it would be based on everything i've heard others say uh was that you just need two screwdrivers a hammer and a whole lot of swear words All right, I was gonna try to get it off there in one piece, but wasting time. The other one broke when I was pulling it off anyway. <clears throat> I was gonna try to look like I was really good at this and you know, impress you guys, but look at that. That's the best way to get them off right there. Okay, old one off. Let's see about putting a new one on. Anyway, I got the old belt off and the new one, we're gonna start to put it on here. I've seen some people say uh, there's some trick to flipping it inside out because then as you roll it on with the screwdrivers, it wants to flip around anyway. So it flips into the right position. But I'm gonna show you what I did because I had mine roll up on me on the other side. And I thought, oh boy, you know, how am I gonna get that fixed? Um, Cause I thought, you know, it was twisted on itself in the, in the wheel. But basically, pull it on by hand as tight as you can. Once you get it to this point, you can take your hammer and just work right along the edge. I learned this from my buddy at the tire shop as far as putting, putting big tires back on the rim. Tighten up a little bit, we see as you do one side going on, sometimes your other side will start to slip off. So get it to where it's kind of biting. If you have to, you can put a clamp or something over here. I didn't have to on the other side. Um, but now we take our screwdriver and we get it to pull straight just a little bit. I don't know if you guys' depth perception will show you that or not, but I put the screwdriver pried up here. So the screwdriver's there on the wheel now. Okay, and what that does is it pulls the belt um, basically up past the lip of the wheel. And then we're gonna take the hammer and tap it again. And just drive it in a little bit more. It'll, look, it'll feel like you're not getting anything done. You feel like you're not making any progress at all. But just make sure and hold it while you pull your screwdriver back out so it doesn't slip back out. Move a couple more inches and get on it again. And then you'll feel it actually drop in where you were, okay? So down here now, it's, it's on the rim, but it's not fully in, okay? So we'll take again, just hammer a little bit, and that gained me another inch. 
And the real important thing, like I said, is just be watching, be watching your edge up here that it doesn't start slipping back out. Because then, of course, you're just going to chase it in circles. So when you do this, when you first pry it over, oh, took too big of a bite. And I'm watching that top edge. It didn't slip. Okay. And all of a sudden, when you get to the right point, to the magic point, the whole thing will roll. And when the whole thing rolls, then you're going to think you're in trouble because it's twisted. <clears throat> As you get tighter and tighter, you got to take smaller and smaller bites. Just be careful when you're hammering too that you don't smack your wheel and potentially take a chunk out of it, mess up your wheel balance. Add some oil, some soap, probably wouldn't hurt, may not be necessary though. Okay, now you see that? It just rolled on itself, okay? So now my belt is rolled, oh, it popped back out. Now my belt's wanting to roll into the wheel, but I'm going to let it do that, okay? It's twisting on itself, but I'm going to go ahead and let it do it just to get it in there. Boom, okay. It's in, but look now, it's in, but you see it's twisted, okay? Do not panic when this happens. The hardest part was just getting it in there. Now we're gonna get back underneath that belt, up here where it's straight, okay? I'm gonna hammer this screwdriver in, so we're underneath the belt, we're sticking out the back. Okay, see my screwdriver sticking out here. And now we're just gonna drive that screwdriver around real slow. And as we do, as the screwdriver moves around where it's twisted, it's gonna correct what's behind it. So we're just gonna. This was a lot easier on the other side because I'm right-handed. You can keep up with the position of the screwdriver. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Relative to this spoke, you'll see I'm moving. It doesn't seem like much, but each hit of the hammer, it moves. You know, a fraction of an inch, maybe. And you'll see what's behind as we're moving. That twist is working its way out. A little bit further. The more, you, the more you work the twist out, the easier it gets. You can see how quick it's moving now. We're just about, yeah, we're there. We're there. As that twist works out too, it'll also make it just a little bit easier to move the screwdriver. Boom. We're in. So, it wasn't horrible. I mean, that was 10 minutes worth of video to do, <laughs> to show you guys, okay? And um, part of that was me just kind of wasting time. I should have cut it from the get-go. I spent like three minutes just trying to pry it out of there before I finally gave up and cut it with my knife. Uh, so yeah, you know, the other videos I've seen about this, reading about this, everybody said replacing the belts was just absolute torture and they didn't want to do it, but it took me no, you know, knowing what to do now, coming at it and just cutting both belts out of the way right away, hammering them both on like I did, having both done in 15 minutes maybe. So hey, if you don't want to replace your belts, you can pay me time and mileage. I'll come replace your belts. But anyway, this is something I'll tell you guys why why we're doing it. Um, one, it needed to be done. <laughs> it I've owned the mill for two and a half years and I've never done it. And I called Timber King the other day lamenting about my typical 
my blade wave issues that I always seem to struggle with. And I know there's a lot of reasons potentially why this is happening. Uh, and so when it makes me really irritated any given day, I'll try to take some action to fix it. Um, so I called Timber King and I was complaining about the blade wave. And I actually, the reason I called him was because I noticed the, uh, the bushings here. I'll show you back here. My, my saw head bushing right here is busted. And I got a new one of those too, which that's just two bolts. So that I'm not even going to show you how to put that. Just take the old one out, put the new one in. And so I noticed that my saw head was rocking back and forth a little bit. And, and, uh, I called Timber King about that actually. And he said, you know, that's actually fine. He said, because although it looks like a lot of movement, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's really not. When you look at the, the radius and the distance and everything else in the curvature, it's really not moving as much as you think it is. And that's not why you're getting wavy cuts. Um, he said that potentially the belts, the dry belts on the wheels, which I still couldn't wrap my head around, but I said, hey, you know what? It needs to be done anyway. My old ones were worn down slick with the wheels. Um, now these new ones that, you know, there's about a 16th of an inch offset that they're sticking up off the metal. So the belts will definitely be uh, what's holding the blade now and not just the metal of the wheel, which I will say at least the one advantage or one thing I have that's, that's been good about this mill is my, my tracking has been good. My wheels are always right perfectly plumb. I don't ever have issues with the blade tracking on or off. I've never had to make an adjustment on that. Um, but he said, you know, if your belts are worn down, then your blade can slip on the wheels and that blade, you know, sitting there kind of torquing and jerking and, and you know, slip, you know, kind of a slip stick. He said that sort of stuff will really eat you up more than you would imagine. So he said, go ahead and change your belts. He shipped me the belts. They were like, uh, what were they? $18 a piece or something. Um, which, you know, it's just a continental belt. I guess I can show you guys here the part number. The part number is 85590. It doesn't say for sure what what length that is, but made in Mexico. Yeah, it's continental, continental uh, Insta Power. 85590 that's the part number so you can go pick these up at your local auto parts store if you want to it's a v-belt um, if you think timber king's too expensive which again it was like 16 or 18 dollars per belt and then it was like 18 dollars to ship which i was like that's crazy but it is what it is they sent them to me i didn't have to fight with it i didn't have to go to town i was busy so there is value in that but we'll see now you know I, uh uh I don't really have a before and after to show you guys. It's just purely based on how I feel about the mill. So I, I'm not going to say that, you know, this is a life changing thing, but it's standard maintenance. And what I really wanted to just show was, like I said, I've seen other people say it was just so difficult. It was such a pain in the butt. And they fought and fought and fought. I didn't think it was that much of a fight. Maybe I just got lucky. But, you know, when I called Timber King, he said, replace your belts. I said, hey, that's not hard, right? I said, doesn't it just take two screwdrivers and a hammer and a whole bunch of swear words? He said, yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, actually, I, I don't really think I cussed too many times. Hopefully none on the video. Uh, yeah, so changing the belts on Timber King 1220. Not as difficult as others have said, in my opinion. But get after it.